boys are currently being separated from men. Andre Onana, Adiches of Manchester United. They made some errors yesterday. I got uh, Galatasaray back into the game twice. And it ended 3 all. Well, we'll talk about that and some other issues this afternoon on the show Sport Rendezvous. And I'm not alone. In the studios, I've got Samuel buried out with me. Samuel, uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, good afternoon. Okay, uh, let's uh, start with uh, this one coming from the Super Eagles of Nigeria, uh, who dropped uh, two places uh, from 40th to, to 42nd uh, in the latest uh, FIFA World Ranking. Uh, the latest ranking was published on FIFA's uh, uh, website uh, today, so the drop in places may not uh, come as a surprise following Super Eagles at disappointing showing uh, in their two opening fixtures in Group C uh, 2023 FIFA World Cup qualifiers and uh, on match uh, day one against Lesotho, Eagles forced the visitors to a one or draw in New York while against Zambia, his special men had to come from behind uh, again uh, to settle uh, for another one or draw. So after the opening two games, the three-time African champions are third behind uh, leaders. That's uh, Rwanda and second placed uh, South Africa. So uh, while that is on, uh, it, uh, the man in the middle of the so- of, of the storm and the middle of all these uh, Yosef Pesero, that's uh, in the middle of uh, Super Eagles uh, performance of late, that coach Yosef Pesero, and uh, they are told uh, the Nigeria Football Federation's uh, technical committee not to teach him his job, but rather pay him and his uh, team the outstanding allowances. Uh, Pesero allegedly uh, said that is while reacting to the NFF Technical Committee Chairman Sharif Alan uh, his uh, comments in the wake of um, uh, his uh, future as a Super Eagles head coach. So, uh, so a lot of these issues actually are ongoing as we speak. Uh, stating that the Eagles' job is bigger than the Portuguese. So, uh, uh, Alan told uh, Pesaro in a meeting in Lisbon, Portugal in October that the Eagles had been struggling due to his uh, poor technical abilities and... Um Pesaro replied back saying that uh, you are busy to pay uh, me my allowances but not busy to tell me what uh, I will do. <laughs> so that was his response when uh, he defended. Uh, he actually did say that he would defend uh, his squad list for subsequent uh, games. So uh, Samuel, let me just, before we talk about uh, the UEFA Champions League, uh, in the whole of these, Nigeria dropped two po- uh, two places in the latest FIFA ranking, and of course, uh, it would have been better should Nigeria uh, were leading in those two uh, World Cup qualifier games, and Nigeria had to come from behind, I had to you know uh, draw, held to draws, but in those on those two occasions, Nigeria had to come from behind. So that's uh, a, a very bad, and that raised so many questions about uh, the squad the uh players invited and of course uh the head coach of the team and of course in his defense he will defend himself uh nff year to pay him and this is costing nigeria at some places on the latest fifa ranking 
Uh, well, yes, yes, yes. And uh, it is a uh, kind of bit embarrassing for us to like uh, drop to uh, places. And uh, to me, it is a it is a fair position considering the kind of form that uh, the Super Eagles is now and uh, the kind of uh, ball kind of performance that they are showcasing. Because uh, when you are coming from behind against the likes of um, Saudi Arabia, against the likes of um, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, uh, what are you going to play in that kind of nations when you are facing the likes of uh, host nation, Cote d'Ivoire? So um, I, I, I actually think that um, uh, uh, Perseo should deem it fit, you know, uh, change everything. Uh, change the performance of the team, change everything because we can't just go to have con with this kind of form and uh, with this kind of performance. So he needs to change everything. And him saying that uh, maybe uh, this poor performance is based on the fact that uh, the Super Eagles or the NFF as a federation are still owing in. So uh, to him, that's it is that zone excuse for is you no know, poor performance. And we can't actually continue going like this. Maybe we need to sack him or maybe. Uh, they need to find something to do because we can't go with this performance to that kind of nation. It is uh, we are not going to leave at uh, the group stage, so to say, with this kind of performance playing against likes of Cote d'Ivoire, likes of Guinea Bissau. Uh, we won't leave this uh, group stage. So uh, maybe they need to find a new coach. Because uh, to me, when he has a but Nigeria is not ready, ready to sack it uh, to find because a new, you know, um, Minister of Sport did say uh, a few days ago that I think it was yesterday that uh, until Af at the end of Afcon that uh, they will find a solution. You know. Uh, so this, but uh, what other solution do you think uh, it should be considered, uh, you know, to solve all this? What solution should the NFF, the Minister of Sport, the Minister of Sport should consider, you know, going forward for the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Well, it it all boils down to the head coach, to Pesce. He's the only one that can actually change this. Uh, he has uh, the future of the Super Eagles going to the African Cup of, Cup of Nations. Uh, in his own hands, and uh, he has to change it by all means. He has to change the performance. So uh, it all bounds down on Pesce because, uh, to me, when the 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 players are having a problem, because we have a good and uh, one of the best quality players in the competition to me because we have a lot of uh, professional players playing in the top clubs in the world. So uh, it's actually boils bounce back on Pesce because he needs. Uh, to you know, find uh, a good performance, find the right tactics because we can't continue playing like this. He needs to find the right tactics because now we are you know um, subjected to him going to African Cup. We don't have any other hope now because the N NFF are saying that they can't sack him because they don't have money to pay him off and they don't have money to like hire a new coach. So we have to you know to be stuck with him going into the competition. So uh, hopefully. Maybe there is a miracle to me if we can actually change the tactics and change everything concerning the old team. Because, uh, well, uh, to me, I won't say I believe so much in him to change it going into, uh, going into the competition. But still, we have to have faith in him as because uh, that's all we can do right now. We can't change anything on our own hands now. So we have to have faith in him, uh, changing the tactics. Because uh, the NFF, to me, as a as a, as a federation, I need to sit down with him because I change the tactics. Uh, talk to him. Okay, what is the issue that we are having in this team? Why are the players having a poor form? Why uh, is the goalkeeping departments like this? Why, if you need to drop players, you should drop players. If you need to change players, you change players. Cause okay, but Nigerians, everybody are criticizing the selection of uh, or his reliance Francis on Uzo. Francis Uzo, yeah. and uh, he's still adamant not dropping Francis Uzo. It, to me, to me, he needs to change Francis Uzo. I, I I don't know who is actually backing him, or who is giving him the kind of um um uh, morale that is having that uh, Francis Uzo needs to be his number one goalkeeper going into the competition. He needs to drop this guy because this guy has been showing us that he he is not deemed fit to be our number one. And as a coach, you are seeing this and you are still you know uh cont like uh you are still keeping him. As number one in the team, he needs to drop him for uh, the Spy Eagles to be you no, know, um, um, for anything to be changed in the Spy Eagles team. First of all, we need to drop Francis Uzo as our number one keeper. To me, uh, don't even drop into like maybe second or third uh, ranking. <laughs> no, it should be out the of team. the team completely. It should be, you know, wipe <laughs> out, out of the team for the sanity and for the good of the Spy Eagles team. So mm. he needs to start from there first. And uh, if you can take that bold decision to you not know, drop Uzo. I think we actually you can actually stand a chance because that is like sixty percent 
of our problem solved. <laughs> and the uh, remaining forty percent is that based on the uh, team performance tactics, which relies on personnel. But now the sixty percent of our issue now is uh, our goalkeeper, which is uh, Francis, Suzu, and he needs to be dropped for the sanity and for the good performance of the team. Okay, um, we have uh, some other uh, issues, other uh, talking points, you know, uh, to discuss this afternoon on this show. I think about two or three of them. Uh, and if time permits us, I will also open the port to just uh, take a feel of the people, uh, particularly on the issue of Manchester United. But before we get to uh, the issue of Manchester United, let's talk about the UEFA Champions League. Um, yesterday, uh, the... The the, the 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 third is it the fourth um, uh, 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 phase of the group stage was actually done with so we have just one group games are to be played in the other Champions League Europa Conference League and Europa League will be played uh, later today but much of the talking point is around uh, the UEFA Champions League and of course uh, one very young man. Uh, Against all odds, doing very good uh, for himself, setting another setting records, a breaking record. So this time around, it's Real Madrid's uh, you, Bellingham. You know, just uh, going into that game against Napoli, uh, I was like, I was a bit skeptical that Real Madrid, with all sort of injuries they have, are they really going to win this game? Uh, but uh, from behind, you know, they got, uh, they were trailing done, yeah. uh, in the game because uh, Napoli uh, opened the scoring as early as a ninth minute uh, through Simeone. Uh, but Real Madrid came back and of course they won 4-2. And Jude Bellingham also get a very good account of him. So he was on the score sheet for them and he became the first player to score in each of his uh, first four Champions League appearances for Real Madrid as a sort of uh, spirited uh, Napoli. But this Jude Bellingham uh, for Real Madrid, uh, sort of a revelation he is uh, for the team because you have some young lads young players in his age that are also doing very fantastic for their club you have Musiala and, and a host of others what to Belliam will I say I'm surprised no I'm not surprised because watching him from uh, Bayern from um, Dortmund has been a fantastic player but you know with the kind of team that he was then kind of players playing around him there you can't actually expect him to you know be given this sort of you no know, good performance that he's showing or kind of masterclass that he's showing in real madrid so uh coming into real madrid uh, i would say it's like the best decision uh he will make in his professional career life and i'm happy for him like uh choose the both steps you know there are many there were many clubs you know vying for him we have a uh, liverpool we have chelsea and finally he, you know uh, made a both step to join real madrid so uh considering the the, the kind of uh, um player that he is kind of quality that he has and kind of uh team that's uh kind of performance or the kind of uh team that Ancelotti is trying to build at Real Madrid is like a perfect match to him it's like a perfect marriage to me and I'm not I'm not surprised that he's playing well he's one of the most informed players in the world right now one of the best midfielders now in the world right now because when you when they when the midfielder is covering goals winning games for 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 teams you can actually say that he's actually one of the best so far right now and this is just the beginning for Bellingham. i can see a lot and a lot of a bright future for him in real madrid he's going to break so many records this season and seasons to come because there's a lot of quality players around him in real madrid and he's going to you know uh be at his best form uh with ancelotti even though they even change coach at the end of the day even though ancelotti leaves real madrid i'm sure the next coach you still uh you know find uh or bring the base in belly i'm so uh is a is a player i'm actually looking forward to uh i'm actually watching closely so uh this is a perfect match like i said earlier for belly and for real madrid and let's expect a lot and a lot for me okay uh Another one, uh, another uh, of the issues is the fact that uh, against all odds, uh, against uh, so many criticism from Chelsea supporters, some Arsenal supporters, uh, three games back to back that uh, Kai Havertz will find the back of the net. He, he found the back of the net for Germany uh, during the qualif uh, during uh, the uh, the international Qualifiers, break. Yeah. He, he was played as, as left, a left. He back. was played as a left back, and uh, from there. He got a he found himself on the score sheet. Uh, he, he got back from the international window last weekend. Uh, he handed Arsenal a three point uh, against uh, Brentford. Although one of their game, uh, the early goal scored by Trossard was ruled out by, by Villa. And again and again, he scored 
uh, the first he opened the floodgates, you know, for Arsenal, and six goals they got against the Lens. And their position at the top of the table is sealed because they have 12 points already. Uh, eight points is what PSV uh, is having in second. So, should Arsenal lose their next game, their last game of the group against PSV, definitely they still top the, uh, they still top the group. Yeah, for Kayavers, I'm actually happy for him because uh, he's the kind of he's a he's a he's a player that when you watch him closely at when he was in Bundesliga playing for Bayern Leverkusen, he was a top player there, and I can say I can boldly say that his marriage with Chelsea was not the best, and uh, he was a player that you know, can actually offer more than what he was playing at Chelsea. And uh, coming to Arsenal, uh, I I see that signing as a perfect signing, not for Arsenal but for Harvard because playing in the in, a, in an already established team uh, like Arsenal, kind of tactics, uh, Mikel Arteta tactics, everything is going to work out for uh, for Kai Avat. And when he first came and he was having, uh, la, uh, he was he was finding it difficult to score. I was I was telling people that Avat will still come good. He just needs to sell to sell to in this Arsenal team, uh, let him be confident that okay, yeah, even if I make mistakes, even if I make some uh, terrible errors, I'm still going to you know uh, be integrated into the team. So uh, coming for Kayavas uh, and his uh, current form playing for Arsenal scoring goals. This is just the beginning. Uh, once Kayavas is settled in the Arsenal team, and I can see that he's already no. Uh, but can, uh, can he can uh, he uh, take Arsenal, you know, to a sort of uh, a, a level that uh, or let me say, uh, can he help Arsenal, what was missing for Arsenal last season, at the tail end of the season, of last season that uh, Arsenal just uh, fought at, oh, yeah. uh, on the road, can Kai Havert just come in and of course uh, fit in perfectly to help Arsenal this season? Yes, he can actually be the perfect uh, player for Arsenal in so many key positions. He can play, he's, he's a, a versatile player that can play a lot of positions and that was why Atata signed him because when he signed him then, he, he, he told journalists that okay, signing Havert was not because I want to use him to play a perfect a particular position. It's a versatile player which I can you know um integrate into the squad, play as a winger, play as a striker, and play as a as a central midfielder and an attacking midfielder also. So Kayavat can actually come uh, to for us now in so many key areas and I can see him if he's not injured and I'm um, um, I'm happy that he's not a an, an injury player but if he's not injured Arsenal uh, Avat can actually be a key player for Arsenal going into the season because we have a lot and a lot of matches Arsenal in the Champions League so they will need the best of quality uh, the best of squad depth that they can get so uh, this is where Avat comes in it may not be a starter but it can actually come in as a substitute and you know feel into these missing areas in, in uh, Arsenal's attack, uh, be it the striking position, uh, winger, um, central midfielder, attacking midfielder. So Avat is going to be uh, one of the best uh, players if he can actually get his best form. Because now he's just getting his best form. So we have uh, a lot to see. We have a lot uh, to look forward on Kayavat form. But now, 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 he, he needs to get comfortable in the squad. He needs to be, you know, uh, given his confidence. Uh, let's, let him get his confidence back. So I'm sure that Avat is going to be one of the best player in Arsenal going into the season. Okay. Uh, now, I think to the elephant, the big elephant in the room, and that's uh, talking about uh, uh, Manchester United. Um, in some verdict, uh, some will say that um, uh, for Manchester United, they are, uh, they are as good as already out of the UEFA Champions League. Uh, they are, they are uh, at, the, at the bottom of the log. Uh, just, I think they are managing about four points. Four points and their yeah. last game uh, is going to be against Bayern Munich. So, do they have a chance? And Andre Onana uh, is the man. You know, so many hype, lot of expectations from him. But he keeps fumbling, fumbling. And at a point, not just fumbling, it, it is a kind of uh, uh, a performance that will cost the club, that cost Manchester United. And it did cost them uh, yesterday. So their chance of progressing is on the blink. In fact, they are, good, they are as good as out of the year for champions. They are like 70% out already. But, that, but can uh, something really happen? Uh, can they defeat Bayern? Bayern yeah. Well, in, in football, we can't say... Uh, Something is over unless it is over. Yes, they they are in the fourth position, last on the on the log, and four points to go. And their next match is Bayern. And uh, looking at Bayern, 
because it's kind of game that they played against copper again they are not actually putting in their you no know, best uh quality best performance because they've already qualified and they will qualify as the first uh and as the leader of the of the group so uh the only hope now for Manchester United is if they can beat Bayern, Bayern Munich, which is uh, to me kind of impossible, but there's nothing impossible in football. If they can actually beat Bayern Munich and they can hope that uh, between uh, Galatasaray and Copenhagen, they can actually play maybe a goalless draw or 1-1 one, one or 2-2, two, two, but the match must end as a draw. So uh, Manchester United on their part must try as much as possible to beat Bayern, although it is kind of looking impossible so far because Bayern has now lost a you no know, uh, group game for the past three seasons in the Champions League, so it is kind of looking not possible. But uh, B- uh, Manchester United must try as much as possible to you know beat Bayern Munich. And uh, for Onana, uh, I was so sorry for Manchester United players because they put in the very best yesterday. It was the game that they were meant to win flat, like three zero, four zero. It was the game they were meant to miss. So uh, with on- Onana's mistake, it cost them that game yesterday. Because if they have won yesterday they will have been maybe eight percent sure that they are going to you know uh, uh advance it on the of they will just need a draw against Bayern Munich but now uh it is kind of looking impossible for them but with Onana but it's still uh, the post against Bayern Munich I don't see them winning with Onana <laughs> but, the but it's still possible for uh Real Madrid, for uh Manchester United uh mathematically maybe, it's still possible mathematically well, well, maybe possible. maybe not a qualification for uh, the UEFA Champions League this time around, but at least for them to stay uh, in Europe. Ooh. And this is how uh, it must happen for them uh, to qualify. So, United, they remain bottom of Group A after throwing away a 3-1 lead at Galatasaray uh, to draw 3-3. So, but uh, United can still progress from uh, the final round of matches on December the 12th. Uh, United must beat Bayern Munich and hope that Galatasaray uh, draw at Copenhagen to qualify. Hmm. So if uh, either Copenhagen or Galatasaray win, United will be knocked out of the Champions League. Yeah. And uh, after their surprise uh, goal is still made in Germany, which has left them second in the group. So a draw for Copenhagen, meanwhile, uh, would be sufficient for them to progress uh, to the last 16, so long as United don't beat Bayern. So United uh, must take at least a point against Bayern to have any hope of playing European football after Christmas. So as it stands now, United are fourth uh, in the group and uh, heading out of <laughs> Europe. So, uh, which means there is a hope for them to still play in the Europa League. But it will uh, be should they avoid defeat. It will be kind of embarrassing for them because for you to be in a in a uh, group with the likes of Copa and Galatasaray and you still fail to qualify. Like, what else do you need? If the likes of even New, even if Newcastle. Is in that uh, match? Yeah, and Newcastle would have qualified. qualified. Yeah. <laughs> so it is kind of embarrassing for them to even. To me, if they won't qualify, they should be heading straight back to Old Trafford. <laughs> so well, yeah, they will just focus on the league. I, I was thinking we'll be able to um, answer one or two calls, but uh, time is against us. I just have to go. Uh, thank you very much, Samuel Boyda, for your time on the program. It, it was a wonderful pleasure to be back here. So uh, it returns uh, next week, God willing. That's uh, the program, uh, Sports Rendezvous. So today, for today, this is our rendezvous. Thank you very much for being a part of it. 88.9 FM <laughs>